Hello and good morning, it's Phil Thatch and I'm here today at the Heist Mountain Trailhead and it is Fuji Day and I don't want any of my Nikon viewers to think that I'm going away from Nikon. I just ran into a good deal on this Fuji camera and I've always wanted one and I think that they are absolutely beautiful. It's like a work of art, this little Fuji X-T3 camera and I've bought a bunch of used lenses so I'm kind of ready for landscape photography with it so that's the only uh that's the only camera i've brought today i think probably my favorite camera to use right now is the nikon z50 because it's so small and so capable and so light but uh i don't want any of my nikon viewers to think i'm done with nikon because that is not the case but i am enjoying playing with this fujifilm camera and i'm hiking down the trail here to uh, Ritchie Ridge Falls. <laughs> it's funny, I almost fell when I said falls. And this waterfall depends on a lot of uh, rain to have high flow. And we haven't had a lot of rain. Whew. But it's still pretty even when it's not flowing strong like right now. So uh, let me see if I can get it in the frame back there. So I'm gonna make a few shots of this with the X-T3 and see how things look. Okay, so I've managed to walk right over here by the falls. When it's high flow, it's huge right there and there's another falls over here. Right now it's really low flow, but I love the dark color of these rocks and I'm gonna to try to get some shots. So I thought I might show you my X-T3 kit while I have it here in the bag. I don't have all my X-T3 lenses here, but I've got the ones I plan to use today. This is, first of all, my X-T3 is a black one, which I kind of always wanted a silver one, but now I have a black one and I like it. And this L bracket is the small rig L bracket, which I love this wooden grip extension on it. Really cool. And then this lens is the, what most people call the kit lens. It's the 18 to 55 F 2.8 to F 4 zoom lens. And to complement that, I also picked up used, to complement the 18 to 55 lens, I also picked up kind of, it goes right with it. This is the 55 to 200 F 3.5 to 4.8. Another beautiful modern lens that still has a lot of metal in the construction. I really love that. And I, 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 it's vintage looking to me, the way it has the writing on the front. Very cool. I've talked about this lens before in reference to the X-T3. This is my Tokina 100mm f2.8 macro lens, which I had a video recently where I said this is my favorite lens to adapt. And it's a Nikon mount and I've got a Nikon adapter. And then to cover ultra wide, I have this Tokina 11 to 16 f2.8 ultra wide lens designed for APS-C cameras and it does not have an aperture ring on it so I had to get a different adapter for it and this KNF concept adapter is absolutely beautiful with that building aluminum ring that allows me to adjust aperture. So that is my X-T3 kit for today and uh, I'm, I don't know if I'll be using all of those lenses but definitely some of them and now let's see if I can frame up a composition of Ritchie Ridge Falls. Straight away I'm getting some use out of my small rig L bracket for this X-T3 because the obvious composition from this spot looking over at the falls is a vertical one. And also I've got a full set of filters at 77 millimeters or a decent set of filters at 77 millimeters. And this lens has a 58 millimeter filter ring on it. So I've bought a, a step up ring 58 to 77 so I could put my circular polarizer on. And I wanted to, you know, get the rocks as dark as possible, but when I took all of the reflections off of the rock, it kind of made everything look flat. So I left a little bit of the reflections in as I twisted the polarizer. And I'm shooting ISO 160, one second F11. Let me turn on my two second timer. And there we have it. There is the 18 millimeter shot vertical 
uh, not a lot of flow that day at Ritchie Ridge Falls, but it was still a beautiful place to go with the X-T3, and I'm happy with this photograph. All right, well, my first shot of the falls was at the widest uh, setting on this kit lens, 18 millimeters, and I kind of got in some of that down there and all of that up there. And, but the, you know, the most dramatic area of the falls, let me see if I can, is right there. So I'm making another shot, this time at the 55 millimeter side of the lens. Uh, basically the same settings. Actually, looks like I'm up to F13. I think I can drop that back down. I'm not sure. Another two second timer and you can see how much tighter the composition is. Looks pretty good. Let's see. I'm not seeing any overexposed areas. So I think that might be nice. Two shots of the same waterfall at, from the same location at different focal lengths. It's really pretty here. And once again, I turned the, uh, let me see if I can show you. Here's the polarizer. And there's no polarization. And right there is almost too much. I kind of backed it up and left some shininess on the rocks, but not overwhelming shininess. That way the rocks have some depth. I like this tighter shot of just the most spectacular part of a not very spectacular waterfall. Really beautiful, and I like that there's some beautiful green in the top right corner and all the dark colors contrasting with the waterfall. Came out really nicely with the X-T3. I've come a little bit further down below the waterfall now and I've switched to the 55 to 200 lens. Still adapting the, the circular polarizer filter to it. This time it's a 62 to 77 adapter. And uh, I've kind of made another tight shot from here. I'm not sure if I like it as much as the other one that I made from up there, but uh, I think it was still worth making and I'll show that to you now. This is my least favorite photograph of the day. I just shared it so that I could have at least one photograph with all of the lenses that I showed you earlier in the video. But this one's not so hot. Well, I've scrambled around on this waterfall again, and now I'm way over on the right-hand side, right beside it. I mean, I'm right on top of it. And I put that Tokina lens on with that super awesome looking adapter. And uh, I was getting a little bit too much light, so I put, I've got a five stop neutral density circular polarizer combo, and I put that on and made a shot at 11 millimeters. You can't tell exactly what your aperture is, but I think I'm like 5.6 or 8 or 11. One of those is <laughs> tough to say. Uh, I don't think it's that great of a shot, but I, I'm still glad I tried it, you know, because who knows, I might have gotten over here and it, it might have been wonderful. So, uh, I'm gonna keep digging. I didn't think I was going to like this photograph at all when I looked at it on the back of the camera, but after a little bit of dodging and burning, I've kind of got it where it's really not about the waterfall at all, but it's about the greens and the browns and the blacks and the light coming through the trees and uh, those wonderfully contoured rocks. And I ended up liking this one quite a bit. Okay, well I'm going to hike back to the car now. Managed to get a few shots of Ritchie Ridge Falls and I was able to use three of the four lenses I brought with me. But up on the road, which is not far, Ritchie Ridge is just a super short hike to the trailhead. Up on the road and not far up the road from trailhead parking, I saw some kind of beautiful wildflowers. And I think I'm gonna put that macro lens on after I walk up the road and see if I can get some shots of them. So stay tuned for some macro stuff. Well, I'm completely backlit now as I walk up the road to check out these wildflowers. I started out making photographs with the Tokina 100 millimeter macro manual focus lens of these beautiful yellow flowers, but there's some purple ones up the road that I'm actually here for. I didn't make any photographs of those yellow flowers that I showed you in the video clip that I was satisfied with. I didn't like any of them at all, but I'm completely crazy about as you probably know if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, I'm completely crazy about 
wild white daisies. I just love them. I can't quit taking pictures of them. And so here are a few of those from the side of the road near the Ritchie Ridge Waterfall Heist Mountain Trailhead. Well, the purple flowers were a lot further up the road than I thought. So I'm walking back to the car and I'm gonna drive up there. And uh, gosh, I know a lot of people do all their macro photography handheld and manually focusing, but it's hard. Uh, so I think when I get to the purple flowers, I'm probably gonna try pot up and set a timer and try to make a, a proper photo of one of these beautiful purple flowers. Okay, so I'm at a completely different location now. I thought I could get to some of these purple flowers that I liked at the other location, about 45 minute drive away from here. But uh, it turns out that those were on the side of a highway that you just can't get to. So I came all the way back to uh, my part of the county and I happen to know that there's a ton of those purple flowers growing right here at the Wolf Teaver Creek boat ramp. And look, there's a lawnmower here that may be about to mow them down. So I've gotten here just in time to photograph them, but you can see all along that hill, it's covered in the purple flowers that I wanna get a picture of before they go away. So I'm getting back to work. Using the X-T3 and a Nikon adapter to this Tokina Nikon mount 100 millimeter f 2.8 macro. I'm kind of bouncing around from f16, f11. A couple of shots I went all the way up to f32. And what I'm kind of doing here is I'll, make, I'll get a composition, which you really can't see, and then I've got single point autofocus set, and I'll uh, move my focus point until it's right in the center of the flower. And then I zoom in 10x and lock it in nice and tight. And then uh, once I get my exposure about right, I do a two second timer and make the shot. This spot's kind of nice because in addition to the purple flowers I like, there's also these white ones and some uh, kind of a magenta clover blooms going on. So sometimes I can get some more color in my shot than just that lavender colored flower. Okay, so we believe these flowers are common chicory and they're perennials, so we have seen them a couple of years in a row. Heather made a beautiful cell phone photograph of one of these last year at the boat ramp. And this next shot is an example of the chicory in the foreground with lots of more chicory in the background and other colored flowers as well. So I really like that one, lots of beautiful colors. And then here are some, these are not the daisies that I normally like. This is some other sort of weed, but I did like the white blooms with the yellow in the middle and so many of them close together, I went ahead and made the shot. But this next shot is my favorite flower photograph of the day. Three chicory blooms and I was able to manipulate the background and make it extremely dark while still keeping lots of light and color on the flower. So this is my favorite flower photograph of the video. All right, well, hopefully between here on Highway 58 at the beautiful purple flower patch and back off the side of Highway 111 at Ritchie Ridge Falls, hopefully Fuji Day will be a success. I hope you enjoyed the content and the video. If you did, a thumbs up is always appreciated. And if you wanna see some more, both Fuji content plus tons and tons of Nikon content, feel free to subscribe. I would appreciate that. Hit the bell, boing, 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 boing so you can be alerted when new videos come out. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.